In this video, we're going to address this question of how we know when resonance is relevant to a molecule, training our resonance radar to be able to look at a molecular structure and know, okay, this molecule has electron delocalization. I need to think about alternative resonance forms and need to start pushing electrons to generate those alternative resonance forms. 99 times out of 100, at least entertaining those alternative resonance forms in our minds is going to be important to thinking about the reactivity and properties of the molecule. So this ability to detect and draw alternative resonance forms is really, really important to develop. A big part of this is structural pattern recognition, and this is true more broadly in studying organic chemistry. Getting good at recognizing patterns in structure and reactivity is going to help you become a better organic chemist. And in the case of resonance, here we're going to look at five general structural patterns that tell us a molecule is characterized by electron delocalization and give us a sense of how to start pushing electrons to generate alternative significant resonance forms. The overarching idea of all of these is we're going to have some good electron source, a lone pair or a pi bond, generally linked by one single bond, which we're going to highlight in purple in all of these structures, to a good electron sink. And just to introduce this idea, and we'll see this pattern, it's, it's pattern number two on this slide, but if we go all the way back to allyl cation, that's what we had going on in allyl cation. We had a good electron source the CC pi bond here, linked by one single bond to a good electron sink, the carbocation. And this is an example of a molecule characterized by electron delocalization related structures that have this pi bond, single bond, carbocation pattern also are characterized by very similar electron delocalization. So let's dig into the patterns. And the first is an allylic or propargylic lone pair. Now, what do these terms mean, allylic and propargylic? Well, First, we find an atom with a lone pair. That atom is linked via a single bond, one and only one single bond, to a carbon-carbon double or triple bond, or a double or triple bond between other elements. So while here an allylic lone pair strictly refers to a carbon-carbon double bond, and propargylic to a carbon-carbon triple bond, we can really generalize this out to any double or triple bond without a loss of generality. So for example here, this molecule on the left, we have a nitrogen with a lone pair linked via one single bond to a carbon-carbon double bond. Fits the pattern, right? And the electron flow is always the same when we recognize this pattern. We start at the lone pair, push into a new bond, and push the pi electrons in the double or triple bond onto the atom that's farther away from the single bond that links the lone pair bearing atom to the double bond or, or triple bond. So the electron flow is like this. This molecule has a similar situation going on. It's just we have the lone pair on the sulfur now, and the pi bond is between carbon and oxygen, not carbon and carbon, but it's the exact same structural pattern. We've got a lone pair that we can push into a bond, and we can push the CO pi electrons up to oxygen to generate this alternative resonance form. And actually, this is a good point to pause and make sure you understand where these alternative resonance forms came from. That all we're doing here is essentially following the instructions provided by these curved arrows to generate this alternative resonance form. And here, it's a good opportunity to draw the curved arrows in yourself. Make sure you understand how this resonance form is derived from this starting structure. If we have a cation, that's linked by one single bond to a double or triple bond, well then we've got what's called an allylic or propargylic carbocation. And the situation here is now the double or triple bond is acting as an electron source and the cationic carbon as an electron sink. And these must be linked by one single bond, which here we're highlighting in purple. And the electron flow here is quite simple. One curved arrow from the double or triple bond into a new bond, a new double bond, right, which is gonna show up right here. So this alternative resonance form, notice we've got the new double bond right there, the new pi bond, and the atom on the far end has gone from neutral to positively charged since we took a bond to that atom and moved it over sort of to the other side. This cation has something similar going on with a double bond linked via one single bond to a cationic center. So we've got something similar going on there and can draw electron flow like this to generate this resonance form with a different atom having the positive charge. Now here, notice 
we again have this same structural pattern built in with this other double bond. So we can continue electron flow to generate a third resonance form that looks like this, showing the delocalization of positive charge over not two, but three cationic carbons in this structure. And one note of terminology here that, that you may come across is when we have double bonds like this and an alternating double single pattern, which I've highlighted in orange here, that's called a conjugated system, or we call those double bonds conjugated. This is known as a conjugated diene, which you'll dig into um, in more detail later on in your studies of organic chemistry. The third pattern involves a lone pair directly linked to a carbocation via a single bond. And so here, for example, we have a lone pair on oxygen linked via a single bond, highlighted in purple, to a carbocationic center. And the basic idea here is we start electron flow at the lone pair and we send that lone pair into a new pi bond to the cationic carbon, which notice it's unsaturated so it can accept another bond. And one of the nice things about this, and this is a point we'll return to later, this has satisfied the octet rule at this carbon that was violating the octet rule in the original resonance form. Here we have something similar going on with the nitrogen bearing a lone pair connected via a single bond to a carbocationic center. And so we can flow electrons in the exact same way conceptually to produce a new CN double bond in the resulting resonance form. And notice also that the positive charge has shifted and the same thing happened in the first case. Oxygen donated a pair, converted a bond into a lone pair, so it went from neutral to positively charged. Nitrogen also went from neutral to positively charged in converting its lone pair into a double bond. All right. Pattern four is something we alluded to when we noted earlier that it's okay to have a deficiency of electrons at carbon and in rare occasions, uh, on rare occasions, nitrogen. Um, this is, although it doesn't have an octet, this is still okay to do. And so more generally, any polarized pi bond between carbon and some more electronegative element, we can push the pi electrons up to the more electronegative atom. And that's pattern four here. A pi bond joining two atoms, carbon doesn't even necessarily need to be involved, of different electronegativity. It's a polarized double or triple bond and we can push the pi electrons to the more electronegative atom in the bond. So for example, if we look at C double bond O or C triple bond N, these are both polarized toward the heteroatom. Oxygen and nitrogen are both more electronegative than carbon. And these partial charges and the electronegativity annotation here remind us that this is how the bond is polarized. So we can draw alternative resonance forms where we take the CO pi electrons, for example, and just send them up to oxygen, generating an O minus C plus resonance form. And we've seen this previously. And we can do the same thing with the carbon-nitrogen triple bond, sending those electrons up to nitrogen and generating a C plus and minus resonance form that looks like this. And so it's, it's always fine and valid to take a pi bond joining two atoms of different electronegativity and at least entertain pushing those electrons up to the more electronegative atom. Finally here we have a pattern that looks a little bit exotic but will become very important after you've talked about conjugated systems and aromaticity. Alternating single and double bonds in a ring most typically with six atoms. And the idea here is we can actually engage the pi electrons in a kind of cyclic electron flow where we take one pi bond and we move it over and then that runs into the next pi bond which can move over and that runs into the third pi bond which can move over. And this actually, because we pushed that first pi bond, has vacated electrons, you know, electrons have left that carbon. And so we actually end up generating a valid alternative resonance form where the pi bonds appear to have just shifted positions. And this is an important and significant alternative resonance form. The true bond order, for example, in this compound between the carbons is 1.5, half a double bond and half a single bond in the resonance hybrid. This is another example of this that just happens to have a nitrogen in the ring instead of a CH group highly analogous electron flow leads us to a resonance form where the double bonds are in different positions. You'll see this a lot in later discussions of aromaticity. The final point here we make is that these structural units can be chained together. These patterns can be chained together to create extended electron delocalization. 
And a, a point that, that Klein makes and, and that Klein recommends, which is, I think, good when you're first starting out. You can kind of wean yourself off this as you get better over time at drawing resonance forms. But it can be helpful to look for these one arrow electron flows first. This will help you avoid missing resonance forms. So for example, if you see kind of an allylic carbocation type of electron flow, draw that arrow first and the, and the resulting resonance form, and then entertain further electron flow in the resulting resonance form, just to make sure you don't miss any significant alternative resonance forms. This is another good one where this will come up, um, where it's a, it's a one electron flow, this one as well. You know, if you've got a pi bond, entertain pushing those pi electrons first before you get into two electron flows like the allylic lone pair or something like conjugated pi bonds in a ring like this. So as an example here, I've drawn this ester molecule. This is an example of the ester functional group. And it's, it's helpful from a bookkeeping perspective, just to make sure you don't miss any resonance forms, to just push the CO pi electrons first. In that resulting resonance form, we can notice we've created a situation where now we have a positive charge linked by one single bond to an atom bearing a lone pair. This is our lone pair adjacent to C plus pattern, and we can push electrons like this to generate a third significant resonance form like so. It's possible to do both arrows in one to go right to this resonance form, but then you might miss this resonance form right here, which shows that this carbon atom is sharing some positive charge. 